Brian, could you sort of give us a, a take on the, the, the kind of shape that the squad are in, you know, ahead of a, a very important game? Yeah, I think we're in a really positive state of mind at the moment. Uh, uh, you know, there's been um, obviously winning games, consecutive games, gives you gives you that confidence uh, to enjoy coming in on a day to day basis basis, whether you're coaching or, or playing. So um, we're in a, we're in a really good frame of mind, a positive frame of mind, and in saying that, uh, not a frame frame of mind where we think it's just going to happen for us. A frame of mind where we want to keep maintaining the aspects of our game that's going really well. We want to look to to the parts of the game that we need to improve on, and we try and um, we try and nail that in training. So, uh, yeah, it's a good place right now. How is your injury list? Have you got anyone coming back at this late stage of the season? Um, you pick up any fresh bumps last week? No, no, we, we we pretty much got through with a with a clean bill. Um, you know, in regards to the the long term absentees that that may or may not come back. I think that, that will be determined by how long our season is. You know, we're, we're looking at a, a couple of dates really where you can get automatic spot and you finish, get wrapped up around the 28th or whatever. And then if you have to go into that Champion Cup playoff spot, you know, it's, it's two to three weeks later. So that a lot will determine on, on, on where, we, where we finish the season. What is the position on Dimitri? Was, was he ill last week or...? Yep, he, um, he he had a, a, a virus of, of, of some kind and it come down quite late and, and fair play to to Math who, who hasn't had a, a lot of trading practices over the last few weeks through the birth of his child and he came in and did a fantastic job for 50, 55 minutes. Well, actually 60 minutes, Math would say, but um, and then Alex coming off the bench, you know, as a young player, it's a really good opportunity for him to to, to get that first taste and his first, uh, his first uh, shirt for the Ospreys. So you'd expect Dimitri to be back for this week, perhaps, isn't it? Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, Dimitri was was fit and well trained today. Uh, looked fresh as a daisy. So, um, you know, he's uh, we're, we're back to full strength. How much of a loss is it that Dimitri's leaving, and what are you expecting of his replacement, uh, Tom Bolton? Not knowing too much about scrummaging, um, uh, but uh, listening to Clarkie, you know, he's, he's, he's quite a dynamic, uh, or Dimitri first, first and foremost, you know, he, he, he's definitely a loss. He's, you know, he's one of the best tight heads in, in the competition, uh, does a great job for us at scrum time. Um, but in saying that, we, you know, players like that can, can occasionally get, they get picked off, you know. I think we've, we've played a massive role in developing at the Osprey through, through Gibbo and then latterly through Clarkie. Uh, Dimitri into the player that he is now and and we obviously wish him well moving on um, in terms of, of both of who's coming in you know he's, he's a very good scrummager there's there's always parts of uh, the player's game where, where we feel we can make some some big improvements and I think we've got a we've got a really good purchase there with us uh, where, where do you see their threats then this week well they you know statistically uh, I know they've had an up and down year and they're they're had a club that have had a lot of distractions uh, on the field and as you know more uh, more widely reported off the field so they've had a lot of distractions uh, but in terms of their threats you know they they lead the competition in terms of their line breaks uh, they got outside backs that just have um, absolute gas so I think they're a, they're a very 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 dangerous side and the, the four tries they scored against Edinburgh you know accumulatively phases was about one to two phases so um, you know, I, I rank them very, very high in terms of their their attacking threats. Um, hopefully, we can identify a few areas when when we've got the ball that we can do some damage to them as well. So, it's going to be a, a massive game. But going to Raven Hill on a Friday night, it's always a terrific atmosphere, um, and it's a game that as players and coaches alike, uh, it's a, it's a good trip to go to. You feel you really got your defence right now. I don't and think we have. Uh, well, yeah, uh, you know, uh, we reviewed it today, and there's some really, really positive things we're doing without the ball, and there's some areas of our game that, as a coach and as the players, we, we looked at today that we, we were a little bit scratchy at times, and well, it's, it's up to us to, to mop them up, and, and you know, we're going to have to have a, a, a really complete. We can't afford any hiccups against uh, against this Ulster team, but it, it, the the little errors that we had in terms of our missed tackle count. You know, individual missed tackles early in the season seem to be uh, less and less in in our game, and I think the fact that we're we're showing a real ability now to to score tries 
um, puts puts major major pressure on the opposition, and hopefully defensively we can we can add to that. Yeah, digress a little bit. How, how much are you looking forward next season to having Keelan Giles back? Yeah, I, I think having those sort of it, it's been a huge huge uh, strain on the on the personnel, the likes of likes of Jeff and Hanno in terms of their workload, uh, because. Unfortunately, we've had Dav, who who was out injured for a huge chunk of the season, and now Keelan for the season. So I'm really looking forward to to Keelan coming back. Obviously, he's a he's a massive threat um, when he's got the ball in his hand, but as more so to, to help him develop. You know, because uh, we've we've seen in his his first season, he was you know just a an, an outstanding outstanding prospect. I think the next season, like in the start of this year, you know, there were always with young players, you show that that. They need to have that ability to get experience so they can learn from their mistakes and learn what works for them. So having Keelan uh, back into the mix, so, you know, fully fit Keelan, I think he's, uh, he's very exciting for the, for, the, for the region. Are you still optimistic you know, that, that Keelan can prove a major hit in senior rugby? Yeah, um, absolutely. No, no doubt whatsoever in my mind. I think, um, I think he showed, he's shown that. That um, you know, there's going to be always areas uh, of his game due to his size where the opposition might look to target him, and it's up to us as a coaching group to keep trying to improve him in terms of his his high ball work, his his his, his defensive positioning, his attacking positioning, and where we can utilise him the best. I think um, you know, with any young player, they they've got to they're going to have these these peaks and troughs and. You know, Keelan being out for the majority of this season is not going to hurt him in the long term whatsoever. And how much growth are you seeing in Owen Watkin as a player? Yeah, I've seen a real maturity maturity in Owen this this season. I think he's in broken field and and uh, when the game breaks up a bit has, has always been his natural strength to go to. But I think now when, when it is a bit more difficult to break the opposition down, he's showing that, that, that physicality to... To not try and force force things, I think defensively he's he's shown a, a an increased uh, maturity and increased physicality in his his defensive game as well, and and I think with that comes uh, you know going away to the Wales camp with those young players gives them a huge amount of confidence in their own ability, and I think uh, we, I think there's been a, a definite step up in in Owen's development this season. Uh, yeah, are you optimistic? You know that um, you could qualify for this Champions Cup. You know it could go to a playoff. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, as, as James pointed out beforehand, we, you know, we want to take as many points on offer as possible. You know, we've won six out of our last seven games. Um, we will we'll get to the twenty eighth. Hopefully, you know, it comes down to judgment day, and that's the, the situation. But we still need a, we need to do our part of the end of the bargain and do that really well and get the points required. And and we need um. You know the other South African team, the Kings, to possibly do us a, do us a favour. But in saying that, if it has to go down to a to a playoff game, and whether we've got to go to back out to Ulster or to, out to Treviso or wherever 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 it may be, um, you know we know that if we can we can put our best uh, performance out in the field, we're as good as anyone. Right, Jubes uh, has had a strange season, one or two injuries, etc. Are you are you still optimistic you know, that James will have a Prominent role, if you like, uh, next year. Absolutely, yeah, 100%. What, un- unfortunately, what the the people outside of the environment don't see is what he does every day, in his working day. How he's helping the young players like Owen. How he's he, he's helping with the kickers. Uh, how he just adds that, that that maturity and that advice that he's that he's experienced over a number of years. And and I'm sure James is is probably frustrated that he's not played as much as what he would have liked, but. Um, the value that we place on on James within our environment, from a, I'm sure from a player's perspective, but from a coach's perspective, is is enormous, and uh, he's he's been absolutely brilliant this season. Where, where do you see his his best position? You know, he's he's moved around the houses, isn't he? You know, sort of fly half centre, uh, full back here as well as well at one point. Yeah, my my personal opinion, um, and this may may not be um, Hookie's personal. Preference would be like I think he's he's a, he's a twelve slash fifteen now, um, with the with the skill set that if we need to place him in at at ten, you know he can he can cover that off. But I you know in an, in an ideal world I think the the, the inside centre berth and fifteen are his best spots.
how I guess is used to the region, if you like, will be done on the line next year when Dan Bigger leaves and uh, Reese as well. So you lose a little bit of experience behind the scrum. You do. Uh, Webby's been out for a, a fair chunk this season, and, and Haverfield is coming there, and we're we're signing an outstanding player in terms of Allard from coming up from the Scarlet. So there's experience there. Who's played for Wales? So uh, although Webby's uh, with his number, we're we're obviously going to miss Webby. You know, we're we're replacing life like. I think it's going to be a really really great opportunity for for Sam to step into Dan's shoes, and also young Luke Price, and and you know they can they can start shooting it out there and. As part of any process and cycle of players, there's when players leave it, it presents a little gap in the market where someone's going to fill it. And I think the guys who who really want to step up to the plate in that regard, they'll they'll fill it. And who that is, you know, we'll we'll probably see uh, midway through next season. How do you assess uh, Sam Lewis, you know, as a player? Very very talented player. Um, I think a player that's learning all the time. Uh, I think he's, he's, it's been a frustrating season for Sam, uh, again, in my, in my opinion, but a, a player that has contributed massively to, to our um, resurgence, I suppose, in, in, in form, in what he does in terms of covering off 10 slot, covering off the 15 slot, um, gets on with the job regardless of whether he's playing or not. And I think it's been another step in the right direction for Sam this season, albeit he's, he's, he's not as, had as much, I suppose, games as, as what he has previously. We're obviously attracting a lot of top players, um, Brad and Boat and another one, but do you think that you need to get Champions Cup rugby next season to, to, to attract the very best? Yeah, um, we, I think it always helps. It always helps with your recruitment strategy when you're, you're in a position where you're already nailed on into a Champions Cup spot and you can, you can provide that carrot to the agent and the player that you're trying to recruit. Um, money's also a big issue, you know, with, with everything. and. Uh, and a combination of that, of that. But hopefully we can, we can show that with the coaching staff that we have here, and and with the potential that we can keep demonstrating as we have done over the last six, seven weeks, that this is a good place for players to to improve their game and to, to play top top end rugby. And do you think? And I know people are getting better at being asked about George North. Is he going to come? Is he is he not? But is that perhaps one big factor for him? Is that what he's waiting to find out when you're actually in the Champions? I don't know if George, you know, he might be. I'm, I, I can't get in George's inside George's head to ask him that question. But, um, but I, you know, I think um, I think every time a, a region says we're not going to sign him, I go, oh, that's good. We're still in the hunt then. So, you know, that's 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 at levels above me. Uh, and uh, you know, if George was 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 to come to the Ospreys, I think we could provide a platform for him that he could showcase his talents and show showcase his ability. So. I think would be a pretty good fit for George. Did you say it's above your head. Do you know anything about that? What's going on with it? No, no, I don't. I'm not sure at all. I, uh, you know, at the moment, you know, coaching it's it's a it's a day to day thing for me. It's a week to week thing. It's about trying to get the numbers on the board in terms of points total. Um, regarding the, we have recruitment people in place for that, um, and I'm sure with Clarkey, uh, you know, there's there, there might be plans afoot, but I, you know, I don't get involved in that kind of stuff. Tom Bozo, what, what do you get from him? What, what will he bring? I think initially, like I think he's going to be obviously, he's solid in the scrum. He's got good technique. Um, you know, a, around the field, I'm sure there's areas of his game that we can really, really fine tune and and look to to give him the sort of skill sets that's going to help him become a an Ospreys player. So, um, I think what we've seen from the Cheetahs this year is that if you're able to to get some of their starting fifteen. And bring them into your environment, as they've shown. They've been they've been outstanding from him, uh, following a a pretty um, a start of the season where they weren't in the best place in terms of um, being able to set up their season. And I think they've so any time you can get one of those players from one to fifteen, I think he's a he's a real coup for the club. Because you said you thought that Dimitri was one of the best tight heads around. Hmm. How good is both? Did you think? Is he as good? Better? Uh, again, I, the technical aspects of the scrum, I, I can't comment on um, around the field. Obviously, there's parts of his game that that probably we're going to have to to to, to really look at and, and fine tune. But um, you know, the fact that he started so many games for the Cheetahs show show that he's a he's a quality player. And you know, we're we're going to look forward to to welcome welcoming me here to to the Ospreys. He was in demand, wasn't he? If you read 
you know, according to reports, you know, a lot of people want it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and that's I think that's the quality of the rugby, and in terms of the, the set piece that the cheetahs have showed this year, and also their open play. So, it's it, it, it's great for for the reason that Tom thinks this is the right place for him. Um, it's great for for us as a reason that we're able to attract players of that caliber. With Dimitri leaving and perhaps doing a Montpellier, is that a financial thing? And that perhaps just illustrates how hard it is to compete with French clubs who can offer him a little bit. Look, we can give you a bit more money if you come with us. Listen, you, you go in a negotiation and, um, you know, you, you throw out a number of, of, for example, you throw out this, this kind of number at, at A and the, the French clubs come in and triple it. You, <laughs> there's not much chance, is there, really? So uh, they, they have huge spending power and, and that's, that's what we're faced with in terms of our, um, the competing competitions, you know. At, all we can say is that, uh, Dimitri's been a, a fantastic servant to the club while he's been here. We've played a massive role in helping Dimitri achieve his ambitions while he's here, hopefully, and and then and and beyond. And like I said, Montpellier is a, a, a we'll go into the French French competition. It's a massive, massive club, and you know we wish him well. Just, just finally, for me, I mean, when you see the Scarlets having the success they're having, and you see you know Good Friday that that game down the park at Scarlets and all the glory down there, I mean. How confident are you that the Ospreys can, next season, get back to that kind of success, enjoy those kind of memorable days that you used to enjoy? Yeah, I think what it does is, is it makes you reflect as a coach that, you know, rugby does go in cycles and, you know, the, the Ospreys probably over a number of years have, have had that dominance over the, the other regions. Um, at the moment, for the last two seasons, you know, the Scarlets have, have really come to the fore and fair play, they've played some... Um, fantastic rugby in the in the process of it um, what we've got to do is is on the field strive to be the best that we can possibly be with the with the people that we have available off the field strive to 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 you know uh, to be able to function as, as a club you know uh, without without going into debt so that we're sustainable and also keep trying to improve things off the field from a financial perspective and where where we are in compared to the Scarlets next year, only time will tell that. But what I do know is that we're six out of seven at the moment. We're on a run of form, um, and if we keep keep improving as a individually and collectively, we're going to be in good shape. And just on Ulster, it's, it's an important game for them as well, isn't it? In terms of Champions Cup qualification in their conference, but also in terms of in terms of Ulster qualifying for Champions Cup. And yeah. In terms of playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. You know they've got Treviso breathing down their neck by only a point. Um, and they have the All Star do have a game in hand, um, but in saying that, so like I said, Friday night at Ravenhill, there's not too many better places in European rugby that you like going to. You know it's going to be a full house there. You know they're going to be vocal. Um, it's exciting for us as a as a group going out there on the run of form that we're on at the moment. And but we know full well that we're going to have to play a pretty perfect game if we're going to go out there and get the result.